Hey everyone, Step here for Gathering Information. I'm here to talk about the creatures of War of the Spark. Now we don't do a full set review on this channel because there are plenty of great channels doing that sort of thing already, but we do something of a primer. So the first thing we always look at is the creatures of a set. Mostly because we play primarily limited and creatures are the best way to win most games of limited. They are the things that are going to matter the most, and they put removal, which is our next portion of our primer, into the context that you need to be able to rate it. So, onward we go. In War of the Spark, most of the excitement revolves around planeswalkers and not the creatures, although there are a few very exciting creatures. Most of them tend to be basically what you'd expect. At common and uncommon, having a variety of smaller creatures with a few on the top end in case you need a plain Jane finisher for your curve. Sorting them by toughness, though, tells a little bit of a different story, with white having the most small creatures, as you'd expect, and uh, having very few, in fact only three, at common or uncommon, with toughness four or greater. Moving on to blue, they have zero one-toughness creatures, a few two-toughness, and then, well, very few creatures in general. Uh, blue is not really the creature color, but they all tend to have high toughness to power ratios. Still, though, only three creatures over three toughness. It looks like our lightning strikes are likely to get value. Black has a similar spread with a lot more small things that you could either sacrifice or have other abilities. Red has the same sort of distribution as white, but with a little bit uh, higher power to toughness ratio. And green, of course, has most big things with uh, massive power at the lower manas or massive toughness at higher ones. There is also almost a cycle of guild-colored creatures. We're missing the it one. The it one, hmm, must be a spell. But uh, we're not going to spend too much time worrying about those, because what I really want to talk about is the pair of keywords that are going to make all of these low-toughness things more difficult to deal with than you'd expect. There are very few token makers in this set. Most of them are at rare, but the one consistent token maker that you see all over every rarity and a whole big wedge of the color pie is a mass. There are no fewer than 21 cards in the set, a lot of them at common, that have the amass keyword. Amass, of course, reading. If you do not already control, a zombie army creature token, create one, then put a plus one plus one counter equal to the amass number onto target zombie army creature you control. So these zombie armies are going to be all over the place and they're going to get big. There aren't many tokens in the set, but these ones are important. They are Nico Bolas's undead army, the Dreadhorde, and they have the potential to get pretty big, up to 6 power, 7 power, 8 toughness, whatever, um, just based on the number of amass cards you might be able to get in your deck. Of course, amass isn't the only way to put plus 1 counters on these, and that's where our second keyword mechanic for the set comes into play, proliferate. Proliferate reads, choose any number of permanents and or players, then give each another counter of each kind they already have. Now, this is a returning mechanic, and it was a lot of fun in Scars of Mirrodin, where I think it first came from. But here it's being used in a slightly different context. The minus one, minus one counters have been replaced with plus one, plus one counters, like on the Amass creatures or on creatures in general. Ajani the Greathearted can put a plus one counter on everything you control, and then if you keep proliferating from there, oh boy. So things are going to get a lot bigger than they would initially be. All of those 
two and three toughness things will become four or five, six toughness things if you amass enough proliferate. So I think that's all there is really to say about the creatures. Beware, they will grow, they will change. The tokens will grow and change over time. But um, what's really exciting about this set is the Planeswalkers. We'll be talking about them possibly tomorrow, but definitely we'll be talking about the removal. So come back for that, and uh, thanks for watching. If you want more from us, you can check out The Girl in Real Life did a video yesterday about the card that she's most excited to see from the new set. And you can catch our streams Monday through Friday at 3 p.m. Eastern. We play Magic the Gathering Arena, so that's exciting. Also, links to all of our other content in the doobly-doo down below. I play games, Tams plays games, we play Magic, we do these sorts of things, and uh, if you want to help us continue doing what we do, you can always buy us a coffee or a tea in the link down below. Thanks everybody and hope to see you tomorrow for part two.